Hello, hello, my loves. I'm so happy to be here with you. <laughs> um, it is the 2nd of November, so I do apologize. I wanted to have this video out the 1st of November, and I was in like a time warp for the last 24 hours. I don't know what happened. It was like the end of October was the way it was, and then November 1st, it was almost like the whole world flipped upside down from my perspective. November is definitely bringing in some very different energies and I'm hoping that this is not going to be um, a daily thing. <laughs> I'm hoping that this is just, this little switch up is just the way it, the energy is shifting out of spooky season. Maybe it's the veil is starting to close up again and you know, it's just been, it's just been a little crazy. It's just been a little crazy, I will say. But we are here and in today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about my October wrap up, my reads that I read, the books that I read in October, and then we're gonna share, or I'm going to share with you guys my November TBR. So if you are interested in seeing what I have to show you guys, if you wanna hear about how my spooky season went, um, and if you want to hear about all the books that I read, please keep watching. So a spooky season. I did kind of share a bit about it in my last video. So if you haven't seen that video, please um, check it out. I do share the first half of October with you guys. So second half of October was pretty laid back. I would say I got most of my spooky events and that kind of thing done the first half of October. Second half was more laid back, sit at home, read, enjoy the, the Halloween decorations. Um, we had a barbecue last Saturday. So the Saturday right before Halloween, we did host um, a barbecue and it was a last minute thing. We just had family, my husband's family over and we carved pumpkins, we had food, we just hung out and it was a really nice time. It was just something we threw together literally last minute. That was kind of like the way that we closed out the October season. Uh, my Halloween was very literally was very low key and laid back. My husband was home with me and what do we do? <laughs> I think on Halloween day, we I think I watched, yeah, Halloween 2. So I watched a Michael Myers movie. I always have to watch some kind of Michael Myers movie. So Halloween 2 was it. I watched the first one last year. What else? I was reading. I finished a book. Um... It was just like a cozy, one of those cozy days. Oh, and then trick-or-treaters, we did have trick-or-treaters. We didn't have as many trick-or-treaters as back in the 90s, you know? <laughs> so trick-or-treating this these year, these, these days, it's just not the same. It is definitely not the same. I did have about at least 30 kids though, and I only know that because I put my little, my treats in those little treat bags. So I know I had 30 of them and I gave them all away. So we had at least 30 trick-or-treaters and it was fun. It was my husband and I, we put our little setup outside and we just enjoyed the kids coming up and trick-or-treating and just sitting out. It was very cold. That was another thing that was different. Last October, it was not as cold. I remember, in fact, I think it was a little warm. Um, so the cold front did come in. So that was kind of nice. It did feel even more like fall and that spooky vibe. And then we also had a little surprise visit from a ghost. <laughs> so my husband and I were sitting in the living room after about an hour of trick-or-treaters. We packed up when things started to slow down and we came back in the house and we were in our recliners and we were putting on a movie and the doorbell goes off because there was another trick-or-treater at the door and my husband gets up off the chair and the <laughs> on the little table thing that I had where I had my headless horseman and like my haunted houses my spooky tree which is motion censored but I've kept him off the entire season um went off 
So all of a sudden my little spooky tree turned purple because he lights up purple and then he starts to talk and he has like a cackle and this and that and he went off. So I looked at my husband kind of shocked and he goes and he helps the trick-or-treaters and when he comes back, I literally asked him if he turned on my tree and I said, oh, I think I said something like, oh, that's cool. You turned it on. I didn't know you turned it on. And he goes, I didn't turn it on. <laughs> And I literally had to take a pause and I was like, what do you mean you didn't turn it on? You know, so I literally asked him, I was like, no, be serious. Are you are you playing around? And he goes, no, I didn't turn it on. So I did a little snippet, a little video of it on my Instagram and it was the craziest thing. <laughs> OK, you guys, so the, we had trick or treaters that came to the door and my husband's getting up from the couch. And this thing went off. He literally turned on, but I have not turned him on. Literally to play him, there's a try me button somewhere, but he's motion censored and he went off. So I asked my husband, did you turn it on? Are you playing a joke? No. <laughs> he said no. So this thing went off by himself and he won't turn on now. It's so weird. Uh, I'm trying to figure trying to make you go off. So I got off and I went up. The trigger treaters. Yeah, he won't turn on. Literally, look. Look at that. It's too dark. I can't see it. <laughs> oh my god, he's on off. That's fucking weird. I don't, and I never put batteries in. And then you can't do the try me because it doesn't. It's not connected. <gasps> chills right now he literally turned purple and he was laughing and he said something that was fucking wild oh, i have chills okay walk by it so we turned it on i don't remember okay so when you walk by him because he's on he's motion sensor so he goes off. Yeah, he was off, babe. I did not turn him off. I mean, I did not turn him on. That is fucking wild. Isn't that crazy? We got our little uh, Halloween spooky spook for the night. So, yeah, so uh, that was pretty much like a visit from a ghost. <laughs> um, I figured it was just like the little cherry on top of an amazing spooky season. Uh, I feel like my goal of making this October, this spooky season, all about me and all about just doing all the things that make me happy, I feel like I really stuck with that goal and I did everything. I did all of the stuff. And I do have to say that this spooky season was absolutely 100% perfect. Um, I wouldn't have changed anything about it. And I'm just really happy that I allowed myself to enjoy the spooky season. Let's talk about the books that I read in October. I did write them down here so I don't forget the titles. But in October, I read a total of one, two, three, four, five books. So I did read five books. One of them I did include in September's list because I read most of it in September and then I finished it in October. So that is Dark Harvest. So Dark Harvest was probably, I would say, a very, like if you are looking for a Halloween, like the ultimate Halloween book to read, it gives you the Halloween vibes and it's kind of like spooky, it's kind of slasher, it's kind of, it's just different. Dark Harvest is really, really good. So I read that one. I started it on the 26th of September and I finished it the 1st of October. And it is a four star read. I gave that four stars. Um, it's narrated pretty much. So when you're reading it, it's like you're being told a story and you're just going through the whole day. It's like a one day thing um, of October. And there's just a lot to do in this book. There's killings, there's, you know, a lot of gore. There's just, it's, it's, I wouldn't necessarily say it's, it scared me, but the way that this author described some of the stuff, it is eerie. So 
definitely worth a read if you haven't checked it out. And I would say too, if you are looking for those Halloween vibe reads, put this one on your list to enjoy next year because it's really, really good. After that, on the 2nd of October, I started to read Whale Fall. This book is probably my most favorite of the entire year. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a big deal because I've read quite a few books this year. I read it from October 2nd through October 7th, and it is a five star read. Whale Fall is a story, and I won't give any spoilers, but Whale Fall is pretty much a story of a guy who is a scuba diver and he is swallowed up by a sperm whale. And the entire book is his experience of being in the whale's belly and his whole adventure of trying to save his life. There's a lot more to this book, but I cannot say it because it will be a spoiler. Um, so you're going to have to read it if you want to know if he survives or not or what happens. The book is very descriptive. The book is very detailed. It is written from the diver's perspective. And I would definitely say it was a quick read for me. The chapters are so short. <laughs> <laughs> because you're literally like going through <clears throat> each chapter kind of goes through it'll tell you like how much air he has left in his tank and so you're kind of like seeing this you know timeline of how much time he has left to you know get himself away from this whale belly and I don't know that's just the whole story is so good and there's other twists and turns in there as well so definitely check it out. It's definitely has themes of horror, like a psychological thriller, I would say. <laughs> if you are a whale lover, if you love whales, if you love um, deep sea horror, I would definitely say this is a good one too. So then after that, I read Exorcist House. This one I read from October 8th through the 11th. I devoured this book. <clears throat> this was also a five-star read. It was really, really good. I have to say this book really just gave me the creeps. <laughs> I was looking for something this spooky season that was going to scare me or just give me the creeps or whatever. And I would have to say The Exorcist House was the book that creeped me out. I was reading it at night, which I do feel gives more intensity to the scare. It was two nights where I was reading this book and it's so good that I wanted to continue reading it, but I literally had to put it down so I could go to sleep. <laughs> and at night I had the creepy creep feeling. And when I say that, it's like this feeling of something is in my room or the feeling of something's looking at me and I don't know who it is. Like it's just that weird creepy feeling that I got. And the book, the stuff that I was reading in the book, I don't know if it was just the, the way it was timed out, <clears throat> but it really did creep me out. So <laughs> I would definitely say this read got five stars specifically because it was probably one of the only horror books that I read this season that did genuinely scare me. And that says a lot because I do feel like I am immune to horror. So I do feel like it takes a lot to scare me or it takes a lot to creep me out. And this book did it. So if you like exorcisms, if you <laughs> if you like gore, if you like um, kind of like, you know, books around that subject matter, I would say definitely give it a try. So then after that, I picked up The Return. So The Return I started from the, the 12th of October and I finished it on the 18th and it is a four star read. The return was almost going to be a three star read, I will admit, but I would have to say the last 20% of the book really just made it for me. The return is pretty much about um, a group of friends and one of the best friends disappears. She goes on a hike and then she disappears for two years. And then she, her friends literally, they have a whole funeral and stuff for her. And then two years later, she shows back up. And of course, as you could probably guess, when she shows up, she's not quite herself and her friends are trying to figure out what happened to her. Leaves you wanting to know more. It leaves you wanting to know how it ends, what's going on with this book. Um, so it definitely would say it grabbed my attention. There were a few times where the storyline kind of got a little bit slow for me. I was just waiting for more action or 
there was just like a point where it was kind of like, okay, where is this going to go? You know, the ending portion of the book was really, really good. It just, it's one of those where it takes you on a journey and then it's just like you're slammed with all of this intensity. <laughs> so it's one of those kinds of reads. Um, and then lastly, I read When I'm Dead. Now, <laughs> the last book, The Return, I finished it on the 18th and then I started When I'm Dead on the 22nd. So I did have a couple of days where I was in between books. I will admit I started to read The X Hex. I was feeling really burnt out from horror and I wanted to give a more romancy kind of a fall romance read a chance. And then I found out I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> I craved the horror. Um, and so the love story, the romance stuff just wasn't hitting it for me. So I ended up DNFing it. I don't know if I'm going to pick it up and reread it. I, it's kind of, I don't know if I want to say boring because it was cute. Like it, there was a storyline to it. But it's just not my jam, you know? So I don't know. We'll see if I pick it up. And then on the 22nd, I started to read When I'm Dead. And When I'm Dead, <laughs> I read it from the 22nd of October through the 27th. And I gave it a four-star read. When I'm Dead, and I actually have the book right here because I wanted to show you guys. This was the first book that I got in my Book of the Month box. So I did subscribe to Book of the Month. I figured... I always hear other booktubers talk about it and I was just really curious to see what, you know, it would be like and I gave it a chance. So I did sign up for book of the month and this was the first book I got and it was actually really good. So When I'm Dead is more of a mystery, like a murder mystery and pretty much you are going on this journey of a father and a, and a, a father and a mother um, trying to figure out where their daughter is. Their daughter went missing. It's a really, really good book. It's slow at times, but I think if you can get past that, you'll really like the storyline. Like it has quite a few, you know, twists and turns to it. I was trying to figure out the murder on like as I was reading it and I obviously didn't figure it out. <laughs> but I would definitely say it was pretty good. There was a time like in the middle of it where I was getting bored. And I don't know if it's just because there wasn't much action or I was anticipating stuff and it wasn't happening. So it's one of those reads where it's kind of slow, but then it gets really good and you finally figure out the ending and the ending was good. So <laughs> it kind of seems like a lot of books follow that little flow. And as much as I like that, it is also very annoying because sometimes I want action packed in the book the entire time. So that was my TBR for October. Now let's talk about what I'm going to read for November. I do have my little haunted house book bag here. Now, when I show you guys these books, this doesn't mean I'm going to read every single one <laughs> because I have learned that, you know, doing these read these reads and stuff, if I lose interest in something, I'm not going to force myself to finish a book. If I put too much pressure to read something that I'm not enjoying, what's the point? Like I'm wasting time, you know? So just because I show a book here today doesn't mean I'm going to read it. It's just... I have a pile. This is the pile I'm going to be choosing from with, with stuff and we'll see what happens. First off, the book that I had started reading, I started this yesterday, but I only read like a couple pages. I've had a slow start to my reading too, by the way, um, is Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. So Rachel Harrison wrote The Black Sheep. She also wrote Cackle and Another book, there was another book <clears throat> that she read. I think it was, oh, The Return. <laughs> and I really, really enjoy her writing style. So I wanted to give sh Such Sharp Teeth a try. I figure if I've already liked her other books, I'll probably like this one. So this is what I'm starting off my November with. It is a werewolf, uh, werewolf novel, and it looks like it has some romance in it. We shall see, but I like it. It's good so far, so we'll see if I finish it. Next on my TBR is The Troop. So this is by Nick Cutter. Nick Cutter wrote a book called The Deep. And if you like undersea horror, that is a really, really good one. I will definitely say it's so good. So if you love deep sea horror, check out that book. Nick Cutter is a really, really good author. He's very gory and descriptive. <clears throat> and I hear that the troop is very, very gory. So 
this is on my list specifically for that reason. I know that this will probably creep me out or give me the heebie-jeebies and maybe that's what I need. So if I'm looking for something with a lot of gore and horror, I will probably pick this one up to check out. I also have Poltergeist on my pile. This is one of my classic um, vintage horror paperback from my little collection. And I've always wanted to read Poltergeist. I've seen the movie a couple of times, but I've never read the book. And I really want to see what the book is like. So I do have that one on the pile. We will see if I get to it this month. If not, maybe next month. But definitely want to check out Polter Poltergeist. I'm also going to be getting to Britney Spears's The Woman in Me. So I did pick up this book recently with the intention to read her book. I love her. I love, I just want to know more about like what's going on with her and her story. So I feel like this one will be really interesting. I've already heard quite a few good things about it that people have enjoyed it. So this is definitely not my typical choice for a book to read. Usually I stick with horror, paranormal romance, or sci-fi, but I think we can make some exceptions for, <laughs> for, for Miss Britney Spears. So we will definitely be checking this book out hopefully this month. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get to this one, but definitely if I'm looking for some kind of erotic romance, supernatural romance, erotica, <laughs> rhapsodic is on my list. Um, so I did pick this one up from Target and I think that this one will be a little bit of a juicy kind of a read. And I don't know, every once in a while I get that craving for something romance and something like when I read romance novels, I like the cheesy romance, like contemporary romance, but there's just something about a supernatural erotica that just really gets to me and I love that. So we'll see if that is what does it for me. This book I definitely plan on reading this month and that is The Case Against Satan. So this is kind of a, well, I don't know if it's kind of, but it sounds like it is um, a, a demon possession type of a story. So we shall see. I haven't really done much investigating on it. The cover is very, very spooky and it just draws me in. And it's also a short read. So definitely wanted to make sure I gave myself a couple short reads in this pile because I didn't want to overwhelm. So these next two books, I really want to try to get to these specifically, but we shall wish we'll see. I'm going to try to read at least five books this month, you guys. Um, this one is called Nestlings. So this one just came out a couple days ago and I picked it up at, at Barnes and Noble. It sounds really, really good. It's kind of like a horror. It's, it kind of gives me the vibe of Rosemary's Baby, but it like, it really just kind of sounds like one of those typical, you have, you know, a couple that is, it's really hard for them to conceive. And then when they finally have a baby, it turns out to not be quite what they think it was. And <laughs> so there's some creepy factor with that. And I think that that'll be fun. Definitely fun to read. It kind of gives me winter vibe too. I don't know if it's just the cover. So if I don't get to it this month, I will definitely try to get to it in December. And then lastly on my list, I have The Haunting. So this is a typical haunted house kind of a read. These are probably my most favorite like ghost books, ghost stories is haunted house reads. So this one sounds really good. And speaking of haunted house reads, I don't have the book, but I think it was just dropped off, but I'm waiting for my Amazon delivery. <laughs> But I don't have the book, but I did place an order for Darcy Coates. So Darcy Coates writes a lot of paranormal fiction and they're really easy reads. You can get through them really fast. And she did write one that was called Gallows Hill. Yeah, Gallows Hill by Darcy Coates. So that one is also a, your, your typical haunted house story. And I felt like that one was going to be pretty interesting. I'm also a sucker. The, co the cover of the book is really pretty. Well, not, I wouldn't say pretty, but it's just, I like it. It drew me in. <laughs> so I definitely try not to judge books by their covers, but if a cover is really pretty, I will be very tempted to purchase it. I read her Caro Haunt. I think it's called The Caro's Haunt. That one was really good and it actually did give me the creeps. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if this book is it for me. I do have quite the pile. I do have quite the pile of TBR, but you know what? I like to have many things to choose from. I don't like to limit myself to just one or two books. So 
I go based off of my mood. If I am craving a certain type of a read, then I will give it a chance. If I'm not feeling it, I have no problem closing the book and putting it aside for some other time. Sometimes you just have to do that because life's too short to read stuff you don't like. So that said, you guys, that is my little video for you. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope you guys are enjoying your November so far. <laughs> All of my Halloween decorations are put away. I did move my ghosties to my spirit room. So as you could see, they are all over there. I haven't made a post or anything about it, but I am in the midst of revamping my spirit room. So I am going to be moving stuff around. I just want to make it feel more like me <laughs> and less the bohemian vibe I was going with earlier. So we'll, we'll see. I'm just, I'm trying to rearrange and minimize and all of that good stuff. So we'll see. November will probably be the month that I go through all my decks, do my deck inventory, <clears throat> get rid of decks that I don't work with and just do a lot of <laughs> Not necessarily spring spring cleaning, but is it is kind of like cleaning early. <laughs> but anyways, my loves, thank you so much for being here and for watching this video. And I hope you guys are doing well. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video very, very soon. And until then, take care. Bye, loves.